If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. In order to find the tension in the chord between blocks B and C, we're going to first try to find the acceleration of the system. And we're going to treat the system as all three blocks combined. As a result, the mass of the system would be as follows. The sum of the individual masses, and when we sum those up, we can see the mass of the system is 80 kilograms. Next, we need to note that the net force that's causing the system to accelerate is the gravitational force that's acting on blocks B and C only. It's very important to note that the net force is only the gravitational force acting on blocks B and C, and it's pointed downward. And so we can write the net force in the following way. Because it's a gravitational force, it's an mg force, we'll just use the mass of blocks B and C combined, which we can see from the given information is 50 kilograms. So if we multiply 50 kilograms by the gravitational constant, we get the net force acting on the system to be 490 newtons. Now with the net force of the system, as well as the mass of the system, we can easily calculate the acceleration by dividing the net force by the mass. And when we plug in the known values, we see the acceleration is equal to 6.125 meters per second squared. Now we're going to hold on to that acceleration. And we're going to look now at a free body diagram of block C. Now there are two forces acting on block C. We have the gravitational force acting downward. And then there is the tension in the rope between blocks B and C that is pointing upward. We can apply Newton's second law to block C. Now from the diagram we see the sum of the forces is T minus the gravitational force. And then what we're going to do is plug in the acceleration that we calculated earlier of the system. Since the system accelerates at about 6 meters per second squared, then block C individually also accelerates at that rate. But because it's accelerating downward, we have to make sure to call that acceleration negative 6.125. Very important to include that negative sign. So we'll add mg over to the right side and solve for the tension. Plugging in the known values yields a tension of approximately 36.8 newtons. So that is the correct answer to part A. Now block A is also accelerating at that rate of 6.125 meters per second squared. So we can turn to kinematics to figure out the displacement that it undergoes in a quarter of a second. Presumably block A begins its motion from rest, so the initial velocity is zero, we can eliminate this term. And after plugging in the acceleration as well as the time, we can see that the displacement of block A is approximately 0.191 meters, and that is indeed the correct answer to part B.